What's up everyone? I'm Matt with Ozark Overland Adventures and right now I am at the Hollis Civilian Conservation Corps camp. It is a historic spot in the Washita National Forest and decided to stop here on my way in to explore the Washita's today because I've never been to one of these before. And honestly before today didn't know a whole lot about what the Civilian Conservation Corps even did. But apparently it was started back in the 1930s by Franklin D. Roosevelt um, to help fight the Great Depression and provide jobs to people. But it was started apparently to build up and protect natural resources. And a lot of the stuff that we see in you know, some of our state parks and national parks and stuff were all done by members of the Civilian Conservation Corps. But uh, this video is not about the Hollis CCC camp. Um, I am off exploring again in the Washita National Forest and really excited because today I'm going today is a brand new 100% um, fresh area that I've never been in. Um, staying more west and actually going so far west that uh, this is an overnight trip. So I am solo. My wife has to work today and tonight. So I'm out here exploring by myself again and gonna have a solo camping um, time tonight and i mean as crazy as our life has been lately i'm a little excited just to unwind at camp and just chill enjoy soaking this up and all by my lonesome tonight sometimes that's just good for the soul Ozark Overland Adventures is proudly supported by The More Expo, the Midwest's only indoor event for adventure travel enthusiasts. Artemis Overland Hardware. They have the passion and knowledge to ensure that your next outdoor experience is more than a camping trip, it's an adventure. And Long Creek Overland, your source for Ozark Overland Adventures merchandise and more. never encountered a horse camp area in the Ozarks or the Washita's um, and there is a, a trail there and this is a walk-in turkey hunting area but I mean it's it's really nice I don't I don't see any signs saying you can't camp here it looks like that's what it would be for with some places to tie up horses so as long as there's no trailers with horses here this looks like a great spot to camp 
I like it a lot. I'm gonna mark it. If you want to see, you know, these tracks that I record in Gaia and all these campsites that I mark you know, to, to use for your own adventures, then check out our Patreon. If you're a longtime viewer of this channel, you're probably get sick of me saying that. Um, but if you're new to the channel, that's uh, that's how we do that, and you know, it helps support the channel and helps me be able to do this and hopefully provide you a benefit. The road was so nice until now. that they put the depth gauge over the the bridge here in case water's flowing over it. Oh wow check that out during high water that would be a gorgeous little waterfall cascade thing. This is beautiful. I love this. Just found the sweet campsite. The little waterfalls right over there. I didn't drive down here, just thought I'd walk, but this is sweet. I mean, you couldn't fit a lot of rigs in here, but you could fit three or four. Plenty of space for hammocks, flat for ground tents. stuff in here all these rocks oh this is gorgeous this is what i love finding this makes it all worth it because i would love to come and spend the night here it's too early in the day i'm not going to spend the night here now because it's only two o'clock and i've got a lot more to explore but i would love to i'd love to stay here To a mildly technical trail. I like it. These are those little hidden gems you find in the Washita's. I mean the road was just going along nice and smooth and all of a sudden it got rocky and mild technical section and now a nice little hill climb. This is a good one. has gotten fairly tight in here with all this new growth pine. A 
this trail now has me up high on a ridge line with pretty nice views over there. I don't know if they show up well on the camera, but really nice. I like this trail a lot. I made it to the top of the ridge line, and up here there's a decent little campsite. The firing, you know, you could fit two vehicles up here comfortably. Probably pack in three, depending on what the sleeping setup is. And this is up here. It's an old well. I mean, how cool is that? This is definitely, I think maybe my favorite trail so far that I found in all the wash uh, It's just beautiful. was awesome. Now we're back on the main dirt road. Let's go see what else we can find. Well, the sun is getting low and I think this will be really nice. Um, it's a great, uh, pretty flat spot. I don't have to level the Jeep at all. And I mean, there would be room here for multiple rigs. So it's a pretty cool spot. I like it. 
The only downside to it is that other people definitely stay here and they have left uh, some trash scattered about. So the first thing I'm going to do before the sun gets completely gone is clean that mess up. I will never understand why people think cans burn. I mean, are people really that dumb? Like they think metal is going to melt in a campfire and just disappear. And a diaper? Really? I may need a tetanus shot after this. Surprisingly, there's actually very few beer cans. It's all soft drinks. And someone brought Taco Bell. Well, it's much better than it was. And I'm actually not even going to use this fire ring. I brought my own. So... But I didn't want to look at it while I was here. And what's sad to me is all the evidence of kids being taught that this is that, that this is okay. That this is how you, you know, act when you're camping. That's that's so sad. I got to show you my newest addition to the back of the Gladiator that I'm crazy pumped about. I had it with us in New Mexico. That was our first trip with it. I don't think I mentioned it in the video, but it worked amazing. I did have some people that noticed it that commented on it, but uh, it's this new kitchen slide from Global Road Outdoors, the same people who make our tent. And it's awesome. It's got... Uh, this section, then it's got this section with the windscreen for your camp stove, and then the fridge can still slide out here to gain access. And if you need to, it's got legs. You know, if you're going to be putting some weight up on here, it's actually got four legs. There, so now I have my whole kitchen. I've still got this space over here. How incredible is this? All from Global Road Outdoors. Now, it's a universal slide that it fits perfectly on this 60 liter set power. My 75 liter Iceco fits just perfectly in it. It hangs just, it, it sits just a little bit on the back lip, um, but it, it, it works. And it's 36 inches deep. It doesn't fit just right in the back of a Wrangler, at least a JL, a, a JLU. Um, but it, it actually, we measured it and it would fit great in my wife's Grand Cherokee. So we may get her one for her Grand Cherokee. Uh, but I think this is just a really killer setup. Turn on the lights here. And I got lights. I'm just really excited. And I'm not even cooking anything fancy tonight. When I was at Rendezvous in the Ozarks, this company called Whiskey in the Wilderness that makes these paraffin-infused fire starters. And they're pretty sweet. My lighter is actually out of fluid and I didn't realize it, so I'm going to give this a shot. There it goes. There it goes. For dinner tonight, I'm keeping it real simple. A couple brats, 
some cheese, onion, and a wrap because it's just easier to do. And some Doritos and guacamole. Because it's just me. And to cook these, also going old school, got this little grate for this fire pit that I'm going to try. Never used this before. I got my bed all made. See that little red light over there? That is for my electric blanket, which is underneath everything. Hopefully getting this thing all warm and cozy. And then I've got that plugged into the Jackery 1500 and charging my drone batteries and my main camera batteries and getting everything ready to go before I go to bed. Um, that way I don't wake up in the morning and there's a beautiful sunrise or something and my drone batteries are dead. So anyway, this uh, works very good. The 1500 is overkill for for this but you can see it's at 80 percent that is because i did not recharge it after we got back from new mexico so it's it's still got plenty of power left which is awesome so right now with the electric blanket on pulling 133 watts and with this stuff charging i got plenty of power and if you're watching this when the video first came out jackery's having a big christmas sale right now 15 percent off so good opportunity for you well, since you're here, let's have a little campfire chat about something I'm seeing a lot on social media and even comments on, on some of my videos um, regarding the gear. Now, overlanding is a gear-centric activity. I get it. Um, I love gear. I like testing new gear. That's one of the things I, I love doing on this channel is testing new stuff figuring out what works, what doesn't, um, that sort of thing. But there's some people out there that seem to think that there's only one way to do this. And you know, you've got the, the people sleeping in ground tents versus the people that sleep in rooftop tents. And one thinks one's poor and the other one thinks they're stupid. And I mean, it's just, it's ridiculous. Um, I don't know why people are so concerned about what other people do and the, the equipment that they, they choose to buy. Now, the advice that I give to everyone is start out with what you have. Start out simple and then figure out what you need along the way. I don't think it's a wise idea for someone that is new to overlanding um, to rush right out and buy a rooftop tent and a scottle and you know spend a whole bunch of money before they even you know figure out if they really enjoy it or not um, there's a lot of other things that need to come before that so i saw i, I saw a post actually it was yesterday uh, a friend of mine another youtuber made a video a few months ago on things you don't need to be an overlander or things you don't need to overland. I don't remember exactly how he titled the video. But it was, you know, talking about you don't need all the expensive stuff. Um, he mentioned Max Tracks and I think a Scottle and uh, rooftop tents. And, you know, they don't have any of that stuff. Um, but some, someone, not them, posted it in a um, Facebook group and said, you know, discuss. And, I mean, the comments were just all over the place. But people were just, you know, talking about all the things, getting all up in, you know, everybody's business about why ground tents are better than rooftop tents, and why rooftop tents are better than ground tents, and, you know, why cooking on a scottle is the best thing ever, or cooking on cast iron is the best iron, best ever, or cooking on an open fire like I did tonight was the best, you know. And it just ended up being a big argument on social media about the gear that people choose to use. And I don't understand. I don't know why we care what other people choose to do. And I've been 
criticized. Um, you know, I've got the Gladiator now. It's not a it's not a cheap vehicle, um, but people think I've gone all you know bougie with the Gladiator. Um, now having a rooftop tent when before I slept in hammocks, and you know now I've got that cool slide that comes out the back just to you know to have my little kitchen area. I'm sure there'll be comments about that. Um, but I actually made a video a few months ago on how to shop on a budget, overlanding on a budget, shopping at Walmart, and did a you know did did a walkthrough of Walmart and. You know, great, you know, things that you could buy at Walmart to get into overlanding. And because my Gladiator in front of Walmart was, you know, my cover photo, uh, my thumbnail image, people would criticize me that I can't talk about doing this on a budget when I'm driving the vehicle that I am. And uh, it, it just always cracked me up that uh, people think that, you know, I've, Boom, started with the Gladiator. I started with a rooftop tent. I started just buying a whole bunch of nice stuff. And that's the exact opposite of my progression. You know, I've been doing this a long time. And I have learned over the years what my style is, what I enjoy. And so when it came time to get the Gladiator, um, I had a real good idea of how I wanted that build to look like. Uh, I had a good idea of how capable I wanted the rig because of my style of, of off-roading and the places I like to get to. Um, I had an idea of how I wanted the back to look and build a kitchen around it and the, because of the type of things I like to cook. And anyway, it's uh, definitely been a work in progress and there's still tweaks that have been, that are, that are being made along the way, like, you know, replacing my hand-me-down fridge slide that I had to this much nicer global road outdoor slide. Anyway, don't be concerned about what everybody else is doing. You focus on what you like and your style, you know, the things you like to do, how you like to sleep, and don't let anybody tell you that you're doing it wrong. But fireside chat is over, rant over. Let me know in the comments what you think. Would love, to hear, would love to hear your thoughts. Chances are, if you're watching this channel, you probably are on the same page I am. It has gotten quite cold outside. So, I'm up in the tent. I've actually been up here for a little while. I'm just trying to get it warm. The electric blanket's doing its thing. My my butt is nice and toasty, but everything up here is still, still quite cold. But I've been up here actually getting a head start on editing this video. A little behind the scenes. It's not often that I get to do some editing while I'm in the middle of creating the video. So anyway, it's uh, actually pretty handy. I like this. I could, I could get used to this, uh, this uh, workflow. I'm about to watch a movie and then go to bed. HBO has made a, I guess, a remake or a new version of a Mortal Kombat movie and I'm a sucker for martial arts films and grew up playing Mortal Kombat so I just I don't know why I love the cheesy Mortal Kombat films so I downloaded that and I'm gonna watch that tonight and see how it goes. It got really cold last night. I did say I stayed nice and warm with the electric blanket, but like my head, I didn't, I didn't have a hat, so I just stayed under the covers. Uh, but it was, it was cold. So um, I'm not hanging around camp and doing anything this morning. I've got one more section of trail I want to explore. Then I promised my wife I'd be home well before lunch. So that's the plan. Um, so I'm gonna pack up and hit the trail.
I cannot tell you how excited I am to find a legit water crossing in the Washita National Forest. Do you realize how rare that is? Like that's the, I think the third one I've ever found so far. They're, they're just not very many. They all have the, the low water bridges, the concrete bridges things. So that was awesome. It was low, but it was awesome. The hog pen camp. It's huge and flat, relatively. Um, guessing a deer camp. This is not uh, actually someone's private property, you know, where they can claim this is the hog pen camp. But I'm guessing that's for for deer hunters. They've kind of staked their deer camp, but we could still camp here. Here's another nice camp that uh, have people moved into. I'm assuming after deer season they take their stuff away. And this is a normal water crossing. The concrete slab. Oh, wow, it's gorgeous. summertime you wouldn't be able to see through there and I just I just love each season they each season brings something completely different so if you're afraid of camping in the cold I just released a video on how to stay warm camping in the winter time watch that no excuse winter time is a fantastic time to be out exploring and camping and overlanding and all the things I made it back to pavement. There's uh, there's Highway 7 right there. And I was pretty much just flying down the, the dirt roads because I wanted to be sure I got home when I told my wife I would be home because I've missed her and want to spend some time with her before she has to go to work today. But thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this one. This was definitely one of my favorite um, trips through the Washtaws. Found some really great stuff, I think. Some great campsites, some great trails. Even, even a water crossing and an average-ish mud hole. 
<laughs> but anyway, like the video if you would. Subscribe to the channel if you're not already. Uh, check out our Patreon if you want to consider supporting us in a very tangible way and get access to all these amazing places that I find. And uh, if you're interested in our merchandise, which I'm not currently wearing, uh, longcreekoverland.com is how you get that. Our next adventure is coming up in just a few days. We're going back to the Ozarks with all of our friends and doing, well, I guess what's now is a, a tradition for us. We call it Muddy Santa. Uh, we get together for a weekend, we, we do some wheeling and some camping and we exchange gifts, you know, like Dirty Santa. So it's, it's a whole lot of fun. If you want to see it, you know, check out last year's video. We did it here in the Washita's, but this year's we're going to the Ozarks. So we'll see you then. Bye.